This is the last case management discussion before the trial next month, which is down to be 11 weeks. So we've come down to make a big show. We're prepared to go to trial against these people and we don't want their blood money and we don't want to settle. I was a union steward in 1975-6 and I was placed on the blacklist then. In the end, I couldn't get a job on any construction sites. My estimated losses were over 200,000. What we'll get off these, who knows? And what sort of apology either? I was a shop steward on a number of sites. Uh, I was also the convener of a rank and file shop stewards committee. We were committed to fighting for decent terms and conditions on site. Um, the employers didn't like that, and you knew anecdotally that you were finding it harder to get work than other people. And uh, towards the end of the 80s, somebody from Program World in Action knocked on my door and said, you're on this list from the Economic League. Uh, people involved in both trade union activities and political activities and that's why you're not getting work. The work there's a shop steward and a safety rep on Connors Key Power Station. After we took part in some industrial action, they blacklisted me for the next 14 years up until 2009. I tried to get a job on Liverpool One, the biggest inner city construction site in Western Europe, and I couldn't get on there for love and the money. Now that site was constructed by Lango Rourke, and it was only when I got my file that I pieced the jigsaw together and Lango Rock were actually the company who put me on the blacklist. I was on a project in Chelsea Westminster Hospital and there was a wage cut and there was a lot of safety problems, a chap died and it culminated that we had an industrial dispute there with a strike, a two day strike, which we won. And uh, that was my first record in the blacklist. I was working in the North Sea and there was a, a tragic accident in 1992. Uh, there was a helicopter crash which really affected me. And I decided the only way that I could go back and work in the North Sea was to go back and make a change. So I went back as a safety rep. When I left the North Sea, I never worked on a major construction project ever again. I was blacklisted in the in the early 1980s, and I was working for Langs. I was elected conv uh, convener steward on the Ealing Broadway contract. I was moved to a couple of smaller sites, and then gradually eased out of it. And of course, after that, I couldn't find work anywhere. I was disciplined in 1979 when I worked for Scottish Tarmac. I was a young shop steward, and the whole place came out, and there uh, it was one marine statement, etc. Blah blah blah. But it was made clear to me you ain't going to eat fucking lunch in this town again, type thing. You know. I ended up having to work away from home. I couldn't get any work on the bigger jobs around Liverpool and Merseyside. Um, I had long spells of unemployment. I also had to take a lot of work through agencies and smaller companies. I ended up having to take menial jobs through agencies. And it cost me an absolute fortune. My wife died in 1989. She was working nights. She had a heart attack when she was 37. And I was left with the two young lads. So on it went from there, you know, I, I took a job in the transport because I couldn't get on the building and it kept me near to me boys, you know. I was in the rank and file building worker group. We were infiltrated by Mark Cassidy, who was quite keen to help us out, drive us around, help the publication of the paper. But it's since been discovered he was Mark Jenner. There's one piece of information which could only come from the Shepherd's Bush Nick. The address they got for me is the address I gave the coppers in 1990 on a stop and search outside Acton Town Tube Station. Now, the girl's address, who I knew she would be okay, I said, at Adelaide Road, I said. Now, Adelaide Road doesn't exist. So they've got an address for me, which doesn't exist. Only exists on that what I told the cop about that day. One of the things that's dismayed me somewhat about these proceedings is that they're saying that um, they can't take into a, anything into account post-2009 when the consultant association got busted. I know from personal experience the blacklist is still going on. I submitted my own CV along with two other blacklisted workers uh, to jobs in Liverpool with the main construction companies or the defendants here today, um, Carillion and also Lango Rock. And we were told that we would be given jobs within three months and we're sort of nine months on and none of us have ever had a phone call to start.
yeah. I don't think there's any justice with this uh, part 36. It's, it's just take it or leave it. Otherwise, we'll bankrupt you. I've been forced to accept a, a pittance of uh, compensation that these wretches think that they can buy the way out of court. I'm absolutely disgusted. The only thing is Russian roulette with six bullets in the gun. That's my opinion. Because it's definitely a gun to head for some of them because of the circumstances they've been forced into. If I hadn't settled and the court had decided I'd lower it off there on compensation, well, I'd have been liable for costs which could run into actually millions of pounds. I'd have probably lost my house. It's not just a case of getting a payment for compensation. It's actually clearing your name and getting these people into the dark for the simple reason they are the perpetrators of this blacklist. The victims are innocent. Justice has never been about money for me. It's about getting these people in court and seeing what all the evidence is, how far this conspiracy went. I'm wanting exposure of these companies, admission of their blacklist and their conspiracy to do it. I would like to see some of these company bosses who were complicit right up the top of the chain. Um, I would certainly like to see them in the dock and I'd like to see um, the threats of jail terms as well because like the Shrewsbury Pickets in 1972, um, this was a conspiracy on a grand scale. I don't think you're going to get any justice from the British legal system, I don't think workers ever have done. People might get some money and that compensation is richly deserved but what's important is that we change conditions so that people work in decent terms conditions on site and get paid properly. This um, scandal isn't going to be over after this court. We're going to keep pushing politically for a public inquiry. We're not going away. We're not going away anywhere. This Blackwood support group is going to grow stronger, and I'm going to grow stronger from this. The GMB and Unite, and they've took it as far as they can within the legal world, but wholly supported behind that is the rank and file unofficial uh, action, which I think we need to step up a bit more. In terms of changing the dynamic of what it's like to work on a building site in Britain today, not a lot's changed. That's what's got to change and that's only going to happen when workers stand together and it's built for that day.